welcome back to Junk Journal Gems. If you're new to the Junk Journal Gems channel, channel <laughs> welcome and thanks for joining in. Today I'm playing with some napkins and this is a technique that many others have done for whatever reason. I've never given it a try and I tried it and I gotta say I love it. This is a very versatile use technique, I, I guess what I would call it. And it's so easy to do. So I'll just show you some of the napkins that I've already ironed onto freezer paper. Just, you know, don't buy fancy freezer paper, just buy the cheap stuff. And iron your napkins onto it. And later I will show you toward the end of the video some of the things that you can do with your papers. Um, now, in addition to ironing napkins on the freezer paper, because then it allows you to use it in a bunch of different ways, I also got to playing around. Let me get these out of the way. And I thought, golly, some of my book pages that are a little more frail, what if I um, iron them on freezer paper? Yep. And look at then you can even fold it. So yeah, a lot of things that you can do with this as well. But today we're going to focus on the napkins on the freezer paper because whatever you do with the napkins, you can also do then with your book pages as well. So let's get started. I'm gonna change camera um, shots here so I can show you how to iron the napkin onto the freezer paper. So when I come back, there's gonna be a different view. There, I've got my desktop ironing board out here and this thing I've had for crafting. Golly, I, I, don't, I can't even tell you how long. And I've got my iron. Now, every iron is different, of course, but I have my iron set on a fairly low setting. This is and about what on mine is a three. So make sure you've got your iron ready to go. And then, today I thought we'd play with this napkin. Isn't that beautiful? Some dragonflies on there, some beautiful mums. I believe those would be mums or zinnias. I don't know my flowers all that well. And you wanna take the white part off of your um, napkin. Now, this one is already being, look at. It's like already started for me. But if it weren't that easy, you can take a piece of washi or scotch tape and simply pull up. This is just washi tape that I have. It's old and I don't really like it. So you peel up your napkin. Now this is actually, I believe, a three-ply. There's two white ones together and then the actual printed part of the beautiful napkin. Don't throw this away. I have an idea for a future video. So hang on to these. These will come in handy. All right. So now we've got our beautiful napkin that we'll be able to iron on and we need to grab our freezer paper. I just grabbed what I had in the drawer. My husband, I don't even use freezer paper ever. My husband uses it for, um, when he's hunted and he freezes his meat from hunting. And so when he goes to find his freezer paper, I, I better replenish his supply. It's gonna make a little noise, bear with me. I just pull it out to approximately the size of the napkin. Plug your ears. Set this aside. So now you want it with freezer paper, if you've never used it, one side is matte and the other side is glossy and kind of slick feeling. You want to have the glossy side up toward your face and then put your napkin on it with the printed side up because the glossy side is what's gonna stick to the back of the print of the napkin. I hope that made sense. And then what I do to protect my iron from the glossy bits of the freezer paper is I just take a piece of parchment paper to iron on. That's all this is for, is simply to protect my iron. 
because I don't have a good iron and a craft iron. My craft iron is just a little bitty one. And then just come on in here. It doesn't take much at all, but you do want to make sure you give it enough time to really stick along the edges. So I like to start in the middle and kind of work my way out toward the edges. And I can actually hear the crackling of the freezer paper kind of melting onto the back of the napkin. I doubt you can hear it on camera. But I'm gonna then slide this down a little bit. And again, be careful you're not getting a good iron onto the freezer paper. Got an iron you don't care about? Go crazy. But again, make sure you get all these edges good. There was a couple of napkins that I did earlier that <laughs> I must have gotten a little excited and I didn't do it along the edges quite as well as I should have. But if you notice that, just iron it back down. No foul, no harm done. I couldn't even remember where I had this little ironing board. I haven't used it for quite a while. I used to use it for ironing seams flat when I quilted. I haven't made a quilt in years. I'm probably going over this more than I have to, or I would have to, but again, I'm just trying to make sure I have all these edges down really good. Okay, so let's take off the parchment and see how we did. We did really good. Be careful touching it, it will be hot. All right, it's adhered down really well. So let me shut my iron off. Before I forget that and let me get the ironing board out of the way and check the camera shot oh pretty good we'll just leave it at that and then all I do is I come in here with my scissors and I cut it up along the edge you don't have to be too fussy at this point because you're probably going to be cutting it down to size for whatever your project is anyhow. Get that tail out of there. Now one item to note is if you make journals or, or other crafts to sell and if you're using your napkins in that journal to sell, you need to make sure that you check with the maker of the napkin to be sure that that artwork is not copyrighted and that you are okay to use it in your crafting that you are selling. Just a word to the wise on that. Okay, so now we've got our beautiful piece here and that's how easy it is. And now you've got a sturdy, beautiful piece of paper to use in your crafting. Now let me show you what I've done with a couple of these and we'll play around a little bit too. One thing that I did with one is I just made this simple, sweet little envelope, very easy. And I got to thinking, what happens if you try to die cut it? Let me tell you, 
it works perfectly. And the other nice thing about this is now I've got these beautiful die cut pieces to use in my collage and layering things, um, even as page embellishments, but they're super thin. So this is not going to bulk up your journal. Fabulous. So basically anything that you can do with paper, you can do with this. So let's make an envelope and I'll show you how easy that was to do. I just used a napkin, obviously. And I'm gonna get out my cutter. This is my favorite cutter is this Fiskars one. I have another smaller Fiskars with the wire. That thing and I don't get along very well. Let's see how big this is. I'm gonna to try to cut it in half as best I can. Well, it's about nine and a half. So, let's do I'm going to do about four and three quarters. And I'm watching my line here because I may not have cut this perfectly straight, remember. And it has no problem cutting whatsoever. Now, obviously, you can make this, your envelopes, as big or as small as you want. But all I did then was to figure out how deep I wanted it and how big I wanted the flap just by playing around with it. And then be careful. Here you want to be sure that you're not, I did this once, you don't want to run your fingernail up against this or maybe not a scissors because it, it will then tear your napkin from your freezer paper. It'll like snag it. So use your bone folder and just go over with the smooth side and not the edge. So there's that. Here's our flap then. So as simple as that. And then what I did on this one is I took my hole punch, or not, <laughs> my punch, my circle punch. Thank you. Words are hard. And I did come in here and do that. Now, that might get a little weird on you. Last time I didn't have an issue, but at least it gives you the shape then and you can come in and remedy that. So now we've got that. And then all I did was I just came around with a zigzag and stitched around the outside and then as I make these, I'll have these at the ready for my journals and depending upon whatever journal I'm gonna work on, then I can embellish these however I like. But aren't these pretty? Let's do the other one while we're at it. Now this one, it did snag the edge a little bit, so we're gonna cut that. And so many, there's so many beautiful napkins out there. And this just, see, yeah, I almost did that with my finger out of habit. This just allows you to use them. I've got a bin of napkins and, you know, you buy a package of them. Let's see, do I have them here? And you're stuck with how many? Like 20 napkins of the same print. And you just get tired of using the same one after a while. But this way... I don't know, it just kind of sparked my interest to do something different. Now that one snapped really well. I think I did the other one too slow. So there, I'll have these. So isn't that easy? Let's do a different die cut. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just gonna use my Big Shot. The last set that I used was the Tim Holtz Wildflowers number no. two. And this one is Wildflower Stems number three. I use these wildflower ones so often. They're so versatile. I, 
I think they're a favorite amongst many of us, aren't they? But let's just lay this out oh, before I get too crazy. I need to cut another napkin so we can use it. Um, maybe I'll use this one. And I just eyeball the width to look at. I might need another plate. <laughs> it might be time. The curling up is driving me a little crazy. And let's see, how long do I want it? Let's just cut it off about here. That way we don't have it flapping around. Okay. Back to basics. Let's take our wildflowers. I should probably use the magnetic plate, but that would mean getting it out. And that's not going to happen. So all I do is lay them out as best I can. fit as many on as possible. I've got room for one more there. So now we've got this on. We want to put our pretty side, <laughs> our pretty side down. Oops, and I just moved that little guy. Make our sandwich and run it through. I go back and forth a couple times. If I'm shaking you, I'm sorry. Making a racket on my desk though. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Let's see what we've ended up with. Look at, isn't that beautiful? And then for the areas where there's little pieces, they come out so easy. Just get your little pokey tool out. Oop, fumble fingers. There's that one. I missed one. This beautiful stem. Oh, it's really windy out. I'm wondering if you can hear the wind. And it's cold out today. I just am crazy about these. Why didn't I think of this before? I don't know. And then I'll be able to use these scraps and collage and other things. But let's say you've got a page or you're going to make a folio or something. Wouldn't something like that just be beautiful? And then layer some tags or labels or something on it. So pretty. Here's some of the other ones. Now we have a garden. Beautiful. I love these. I hope you guys give it a try. Have some fun with it. 
As you can see, it's super easy and the sky is the limit on what you can do with these. I just wanted to give you a couple of ideas to get your creative juices going, but try it, have fun, and let me know in the comments if you give it a whirl. If you like the channel or like what you see, click the thumbs up, hit subscribe so you're notified of future videos, and I would really appreciate it because it helps others to find me as well. Thank you so much and have a great day.